Mark Vrugup writes, Lament is the prayer language for God's people as they live in a world marred by sin. It's how we talk to God about our sorrows as we renew our hope in his sovereign care. To cry is human, but to lament is Christian. Lament is bringing our pain to God. It's not simply grumbling or complaining or saying, this is not fair. To lament is is to bring our pain to God because even in our anger and our frustration and our distress, we know and trust that God can, A, handle it, and B, that, that he is the only one who can truly fix what is wrong. Sometimes we think that a healthy relationship means that it's always peaceful, that we only say nice things, that we brush the other stuff under the rug, you know, the stuff that we don't want to say because it might upset someone. But that's not a real relationship. In fact, a relationship that doesn't allow for conflict or disagreement or, or for the expression of disappointment is not a healthy relationship or a real relationship at all. Now, maybe that seems like a strange statement, but it's, it's true. A real and deep and true relationship is one where we can feel free and feel confident to express all of the emotions that we feel. Where we feel free to express our disappointment, our anger, our frustration, as well as our joy and our gratitude and our praise. A relationship that lacks authentic communication or that lacks the space for authentic communication like anger and disappointment and frustration isn't real. We may pretend that it is, but it's not. And often in our relationship with God, we think that we have to hide our feelings. We think that we have to just say nice things, that we have to just always praise God and the things that disappoint us or the things that hurt us or the things that that make us long for something better, that we have to push those down because... We have to just keep thanking God for all that he does for us. But what we discover when we read through scripture, and especially when we read through the Psalms, is is that God wants a real relationship with us. As we read through the Psalms, which is the worship book of the Bible, we find that there are so many laments in there. In fact, there are more lament Psalms than there are praise Psalms. And that tells us something about the kind of relationship that God wants with us. He wants a real relationship with us. He doesn't want us to sugarcoat everything or just to to tell him that he's awesome and that everything that's going on in our lives is amazing, even when it's not. The Lament Psalms teach us that, that God can handle it, that he can handle our emotions. And not only that, our relationship with him is so secure that we can shout, that we can shake our fists, that we, can, that we can say, God, you promised us this. God, you said you're going to do this. God, this is what your word says about how you are going to relate to us, but, but we don't see it. So where are you? Our experience here is not what you've promised, and that sucks. Won't you do something about it? Won't you keep your promises? God gives us these words of lament in scripture, this model of prayer to help us and to give voice to our experiences. And lament works because undergirding it, the the bitter tears, the frustration, the anger is one important thing. Trust. We lament because we know that God can do something about it. We lament because even in our disappointment, we turn to God and we bring our frustration or our anxiety or our fears and we bring that to him because we trust in him. Even if we don't know how it works, even if if we feel overwhelmed, we, we go to him with those things. We lament because God has brought us into this secure covenant relationship with him. And so when we lament, we acknowledge that, yes, our relationship with God, it can handle it. 
Our trust in him is such that we can shake our fist, we can express our disappointment, and yet still trust in him and acknowledge that he is God. And laments uh, in the Bible generally follow this basic structure. They have four basic elements. They begin with a turn to God, something like, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Like Psalm 13. The point is that the person in pain chooses to talk to God about what is happening. And following the, the turn to God, the lamenter brings their complaint. Something like, how long shall my enemy be exalted over me? More than a, a sinful rehearsing of our anger, biblical lament humbly and honestly identifies the pain and the questions and the frustrations that are, that are raging in our souls. And then comes the bold request for help. These requests are rooted in God's promises, in what we know to be true. And so lament invites us to to dare to hope in God's promises as we ask for his help. And finally, laments typically end with an expression of trust. Trust is both the, the foundation and the destination of lament. Prayers of lament move us to renew our commitment to trust in God as we navigate the brokenness of life. And so let's enter into a time of lament together, acknowledging some of the the things that that we have experienced in this past year that have have been heartbreaking and and difficult and, and that have just challenged us so much. And so what we're going to do is we're going to read Psalm 42, and then we're going to enter into a prayer of lament together. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan, the heights of of Hermon, the mount of Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. As we go into this time of prayer together, I invite you to to bow your head. Perhaps you want to close your eyes. Perhaps you want to just be comfortable and keep your eyes open and, and just as we reflect on this and as we lament together, the hope is that that this lament captures our lament together as as God's people. But at the same time, if there are things that are on your heart that that you feel the need to lament, that you you want to lament, that, that that make your heart hurt and ache, I invite you during this time to bring those as well to God, to acknowledge the the pain and the discomfort and the suffering that we have felt, that you're going through right now perhaps, and and to, to not hide that from God, but to bring that to him in confidence that, that he can take it. 
and that he is the only one that can do something about this, this anguish and, and pain that we feel. And so let's pray together. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul, so our souls pant for you, God. My soul and our souls thirst for you, our living God. Where can we go and meet with you? And God, that's a question that has taken on all new kinds of relevance this year. With this pandemic that has been raging throughout the world, we've been shut in our homes. We've become isolated from our families, our friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We've sung hymns from living room couches. We've watched on TV and phones and tablets and, and whatever technology that we can use to make it work. But, but worship in this way, God, is not the same. It's disheartening to sing and worship alone. Each week reminds us of, of what we're missing of all that we have lost. And that makes worship something that we know ought to be joyful and uplifting, something that, that feels at times like a chore. How long must this go on, God? When will we be able to gather together? When will we be able to worship together rather than imagining all of that from our living room couch? When will this pandemic end? And all of that is to say nothing about the way that this pandemic has ripped through the fabric of our society. Doctors and, and nurses and frontline workers are exhausted. Thousands have died in Canada alone. Almost one million have been infected by this virus that, that sneaks up on us unaware and with so much uncertainty about whether we'll get mild symptoms or we'll be one of the number who end up in the hospital or even one of those who end up in ICU. Our hearts break for all of those who have lost a loved one due to this pandemic. For all those who are represented by those cold numbers reported daily. Those numbers that, that cannot begin to measure the grief that they represent. The empty chairs at, at a dinner table. The loved ones who are now left grieving. Those numbers reported daily cannot represent the pain of all those who were not able to attend a funeral because of gathering restrictions and lockdowns or funerals that had to be put off to a later date. As though grieving is something that we can put off to a later time. They cannot measure the anguish of all of those who have had to die alone and, and to say goodbye on video chats. God, all of those numbers cannot measure the loss that we have experienced because of all of the things that we have missed. We've missed birthdays. We've missed family celebrations. We've canceled plans to gather with friends. We've tried to follow the rules and keep our community safe, and yet the numbers still increase. How long must this go on, God? When will this be over? When will you answer our prayers to end this, to heal us, to heal us from this virus? God, it's tearing us apart. The divisions in our society are so apparent as we watch the news and go online. Mental health concerns are, are on the rise. And God, we're on edge. Our anxiety level is up to here and we see it when we aren't even able to have a small disagreement without it turning into a big thing. God, it's hard for us to have compassion. It's so hard for us to separate the, the issue at hand from all the other stuff that's going on. And alongside all of this, there's cancer diagnoses and treatments and appointments and scans and reports that, that we don't want to hear. We don't want to hear about treatments that aren't working, about treatments that need to continue, about the frustration of having to go back again for another round. Marriages are struggling. People 
are suffering silently. And honestly, most of the time, we we are just getting by and we lament that our passion for sharing the good news of Jesus hasn't been where it should be. And we're focused inward. But God, we're so tired. We're just so, so tired. How long must this go on? When will this be over? Can you hear us? Our hearts break. We long for better. We long for the day when we can finally look back on this time. And so God, we cry out to you. We put our hope in you, our Savior and our God. Look on us and answer us. God, you promise us that a day is coming when death and mourning and sickness and crying and pain and disease will be no more. That a day is coming when you will wipe every tear from our eyes and you will make all things right. And until that day, you promise that you are with us. When we pass through the waters, you'll be with us. When we pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over us. When we walk through the fire, we will not be burned because you are with us. You will keep us and protect us. And so God, show us your love and your presence today. Show us your hand of protection. Give us the faith to trust in you, even in the midst of darkness. Assure us of your ever-present grace. Comfort us with your peace. And direct our eyes ever to the cross of Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, our source of hope today and always. For we are yours. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. We trust in you and in your unfailing love. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for we will yet praise him, our Savior and our God. Amen.